Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Uh, in this uh, video, what I'm going to be doing is finishing off the processing of a four panel mosaic image of the Flaming Star, Tadpole, Spider, and the Fly Nebula. So, uh, if you want to see how I finish this off uh, to get this image, then uh, keep watching. So, in this video, um, um, this is the third part of a three part series uh, where I've shown how to actually image a a four panel mosaic image using the ASI Air device. Then I completed a video which showed how to combine those four panels to create this mosaic and that's what we've got in front of you. And then I'm just going to finish off the uh, processing to end up with the final image. Normally when you have an image or you have a normal image that you're processing you'll need to be doing things like uh, colour calibration and things like that. However uh, the colour calibration has already been done as part of the mosaic uh, combination. So look back at that video if you've not seen how I got to this particular stage. So essentially the next step or the steps that I'll be doing will be things like um, cropping the image, um, background extraction to remove any gradients across the image as much as possible, uh, creating a range mask to be able to um, mask out uh, the particular parts of the image that I want to pull out the details of. Uh, I'll be using a number of tools, um, they're paid tools I'm afraid, um, tools such as Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. Uh, there are sort of free alternatives to this but um, I like using these tools fundamentally because they're nice and quick to use. I think uh, that's enough of the intro, let's get into processing the image. So uh, first off, uh, dynamic crop. Um, what we're going to do here is uh, just crop out the edges of the frame um, and those of you with eagle eyes will notice that there's um, some uh, amp glow within this image which is a little bit irritating because I did use calibrated or calibration frames during stacking. You can see the amp glow just there on, on the left hand side, uh, on the right hand side there as well. So I did use the appropriate darks and flats and bias frames and things like that but for whatever reason uh, they're not properly calibrating out at the moment so I'm going to have to work around that. I think it's still useful to have an image that's got these problems in it so you can see how you could tackle those those particular problems as well. So uh, just going to crop that by clicking the green tick. Uh, one challenge I've noticed with uh, processing such a large image because this is a four panel mosaic is um, yeah, my machine is a bit slower compared to uh, just processing a single panel but uh, it is what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is use uh, dynamic background extraction. Uh, I did try um, a bit of both, so I tried automatic background extraction. That didn't quite work as well as I would want it to. Um, so I'm going to use dynamic background extraction because I can control um, a bit more where I actually put the, uh, the, the calibration points. And therefore that will help remove some of the gradients a bit further. Uh, I tend to use um, these tolerances of um, 2 and, and 6. So these two values were taken from the Visual Dark uh, YouTube channel um, whereby um, they, they tend to work if you're uh, doing dynamic background extraction by just putting points around the edge. However, for this particular image um, I want to put some points in particular places. So I'm still using those tolerances and shadow relaxation. Uh, they do work particularly well for me. I'll pick a, um, a sample radius of 20 uh, because I don't want large areas to be sampled, just uh, particular points. So the places where I'm going to put some points are in the areas where I know that uh, it should be sort of, the, or there's very little nebulosity, if that's even a word. Um, so I'm going to pick some sort of dark areas here where you can see if you zoom in a bit, you'll see that there's um, there's no red from... Uh, the, the nebula that's been captured, it's a, a, a neutral part of the sky, so that's what, what I want to capture there. I think the point as well in the advice um, whenever doing things like this is to not use too many points. Apparently you don't need to use that many uh, to get a good background extraction. But um, yeah, I think with this one, because there's there are a number of gradients and you've got four individual panels here, um, I think you need to have and think of these as four separate panels that need the background extracting on it. So um, I will be using a good number of points. Not a huge number, but a good number. Try and avoid the uh, 
the stars as much as possible as well. Well, that's a bit difficult with such an image because there are lots of stars in this image. So that's that done now. What I need to do is uh, just collapse these panels so you can get to this bit at the bottom. I'm going to do a subtraction. Uh, we'll replace the target and we'll keep the background model just so we can see what it's managed to uh, extract. So the mosaic background, we'll just stretch that and you can see obviously there's some very quirky gradients. It's picking up a bit of the amp glow as well there so hopefully it's beginning to remove some of that. And then also this this bit in the bottom right hand corner which um, I think is really just a stacking artifact because um, it's not really sort of a nebula area down in this bottom hand corner um, it might be something to do with um, light pollution or something like that but um, yeah it's something that I need to to focus on so what we're going to do now is close that let's just save this because that's quite a, uh, a crucial point Call that DBE next activities here are um, the blur exterminator so just have the default values use the non stellar then stellar so that's going to be the, doing the deconvolution on the stars then it will do some deconvolution using the star information on the um, the, the nebula area as well uh, to sort of help de-blur uh, this overall image. Okay, let's just see uh, the differences here. So this is after, and then click undo to go before. So you can see that the intensity of the, the stars is greatly reduced. Uh, if we move down to this area here, so this is before, and that's after. So I think, um, I think even if you try and look into the the nebula area, I don't think it's really made a massive amount of difference, certainly with, with these settings. I mean, I could start playing about with them and, and pull out even more detail, maybe. Um, but uh, my my primary usage of Blur Exterminator is to uh, a, a deconvolution on the stars to try and reduce the intensity of the stars, and it's, it's got the effect that I'm after. Uh, so the next effect will be, or well, the next action will be the noise exterminator. So just opening that, dragging that onto there. Um, the other alternatives that you've got for any kind of noise reduction, I would have mentioned before. There's um, the Easy Processing Suite, which is a, a, a free suite of uh, scripts and tools that you can add to Prix Insight, and uh, it's just up in the script menu. Uh, Easy Processing Suite and then you've got uh, easy denoise. Uh, that does actually do a really good job. Um, it just takes a very long time to run. I think it would take even longer uh, given a four panel mosaic. So I'm just going to continue using uh, noise exterminator for that. Um, but yeah, you've got those two options. Um, so if we kind of zoom again into this image. So this is before, sorry, this is after and you can see that um, the, the noise has been greatly reduced and if, let's go to before you can see that there's um, a significant difference you can see the sort of the, the chrominance noise there with the sort of reds and blues and the, the speckled nature and things um, and then you go forward and that's all uh, all been removed so let's go over to um, a bit of the nebula area if I can find it in the image so this bit, let's zoom into here. You can see the tadpoles of the tadpole nebula. So this is before, and this is after. So you can see there's a little bit of smoothing of the detail and things, and we can maybe sharpen that up. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think that works very, very well, and is quite quick to process as well. So what we're going to do now is just quickly command and S to save that image, and to save going back and doing those again. Um, and then the next step for this will be to actually stretch it so it's still in the linear state. So let's go to Easy Processing Suite and do Soft Stretch and then take all of the default values in the uh, Soft Stretch 
dialogue they tend to work quite well for me and uh, for this particular image as well they'll work quite well so just hit the button and then wait for that to complete and there we go so we've now got a stretched image I'm just going to save this again um, so the next step that I do with all of my images is separating the stars from uh, the background of the image, the, the nebula region, so that I can actually start to um, play about with and pull out details and um, uh, boost contrast and colour and all of those sorts of good things. So to do that I use um, Star Exterminator. I feel like I'm sponsored by these uh, tools, but uh, I use them because they're good and they do the job. Um, you can also use um, the, the free tools within uh, PixInsight as well uh, to remove the stars uh, but yeah I don't tend to use that just purely because I've got a Mac and they don't work so that's uh, completed the uh, star uh, extraction so we're going to keep that to one side and then we've got the main image to continue processing with so we'll close that window down there as well um, so the first thing that I want to do with this is actually create a, uh, a, a nebula mask, or a, it's not a nebula mask, it's a range selection in, in PixInsight world. Uh, so what I'm going to do is yeah, open range selection, uh, open the preview so I can see what I'm selecting, and I'm going to raise the lower limit um, until I can see the area that um, I, I want to manipulate so all of the area in white will be what would be selected and then everything else in, in black wouldn't be selected. Um, so this is actually quite a, a large area that I actually would want to manipulate because there's some faint nebula details in there but I think that's too much, that's too little so it's it maybe in the Goldilocks zone of, of that. Um, and then you can change the, the fuzziness as well to to start sort of feathering some of that sort of hard hard mask that's been created and then the same with smoothness as well um, this is literally just a trial and error thing I don't think there's really any um, hard and fast rules in terms of what you would set these values to it's it's literally just trying to work out um, in the image what you want to actually um, select so if you kind of look at the image up here you can see that the flaming star nebula is, is there uh, looking like a big number seven and we've got that there got a bit of faint nebula region here and that's been picked up um, what I'm going to be doing here as well is you can see you've got the amp glow here that I want to get rid of and also this uh, area at the bottom right of the image that I also want to remove um, and then you've got the amp glow on the left hand side there that I want to extract as well uh, I think it's a shame that you can't sort of tweak these even further it's I'm sure that they could do something in terms of this range selection because personally in my mind I can see that there's this patch here that um, would be good to sort of pull out in a bit more detail um, however it's it's only just getting some of that detail there um, but still this is a really useful tool to to just select what you want to play about with um, so we're going to hit apply and that will create the range mask And we can close the preview window and close range selection as well. Um, so what we've got here is this range mask. What I want to do now is save this range mask and manipulate it a little bit further um, in um, Affinity Photo. Save that as range mask. Um, change it to 16-bit for whatever reason. I think there's, there's just more challenges in terms of using 32-bit or 64-bit images. So just going to change it to a 16-bit mask. So we open up uh, Affinity Photo here and we will drag Range Mask into Affinity Photo to manipulate it further. Um, and so what I want to do is actually just remove these, these areas of the mask because I definitely don't want to start sort of boosting those areas. Um, so you can treat this, this mask and it's, it's basically just um, a black and white image and you can paint over the bits that you don't want to keep so change the size of the brush change the opacity a bit and then I can just get rid of this part here because we definitely don't want that definitely don't want this at all 
and we definitely don't want this bit down the bottom. You could argue it's a, a, a bit of a cheat doing this sort of thing and at, at the end of the day what you want to do is make sure your calibration is as good as it possibly can be. Um, you don't really want to be fixing these things in post but um, I can't redo the calibration. I think with um, the ASI uh, 183 uh, camera it does suffer a lot with amp glow. Um, I found out fairly recently that I should be maybe taking flat darks rather than darks and flats and, and bias frames um, to remove this, this amp glow that does appear. Um, however, I can't do that because um, I can't retake the flats because these images were taken about a month ago now. So uh, you live and learn, um, but uh, yeah, I'll probably be doing a specific video on on trying to remove the uh, the amp glow within this uh, the the images that come from this camera. So yeah, I want to make sure that that bit there's completely gone as well. Just checking for other amp glow areas. I can't really do anything about this because fundamentally that's where there is some nebula that we want to uh, stretch and bring out. You've got this as well. You might be able to do something in in Affinity Photo when you've got the final image um, to sort of burn these areas a bit more um, to bring them down. But I think I might be uh, might be okay. So uh, that's the mask. What we just need to do now is save that mask, and then when we um, close this down and then reopen it within. Picks insight, you can then see that those areas have been removed. So, what we want to do now is um, apply this mask. So, drag the range mask onto there, and you can see the areas that have been um, impacted by this mask. Actually, what I'm going to do just before that is um, apply this mask blur um, formula, which uh, I got from I think Luke Matico's channel. Um, his he provided a, a number of these different sort of masks. Um, it's definitely worth checking his channel out as well. Um, these masks are brilliant in terms of just being able to pull out specific details, certainly if you're doing narrowband imaging um, and you want to pull out the yellows and the, the cyans and the blues, uh, they're really helpful. But this mask blower actually works quite nicely uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, just, just blurring the mask, making it a little bit softer. Um, and less hard edges and things, so I'll just apply that twice. So what we're going to do now is just apply this range mask uh, again uh, because I've softened it using the blur and then we're going to open up uh, Curves Transformation. Uh, open up the preview here and then we can see uh, what we're working with. So when we start lifting up the uh, the, the highlights and dropping down potentially the the shadows a bit you can see that um, that's impacting uh, just the nebula itself so all of the bits that are masked out um, aren't impacted by this at all um, and that gives you the benefit of being able to just focus on the areas that you actually want to pull the detail out from um, and not impact anything else so uh, we just need to be a bit mindful of so obviously that's way too much need to boost the contrast a bit but not blow out the highlights here. I always think it would be really nice to actually have a, an on-screen histogram so you can actually see the, the specifics of what's actually happening in these highlighted areas or these highlight areas um, because yeah it's always tricky to see definitely whether or not you're blowing things out. Uh, so we'll just apply that. It's always good to do these things gradually um, Although, to be fair, that's a fairly S aggressive um, highlight part of the S-curve, but um, to apply them gradually and then you can just sort of build up and see see whether you're happy with that particular change. And that's good. We'll just maybe tweak the saturation. I think that's, that's good enough. I don't want to go too crazy with things, so we'll just hit the square to apply that. Wait for that to apply, and then we'll reset curves transformation, and then we're going to start working on the uh, the non nebula area. So we're at reset the mark. Sorry, reset curves transformation. We we'll go up to mask, and then do invert mask, 
And um, what's that? What that's done is you can see that um, the areas that are protected are the nebula, and then we're just going to be working on the the pure background. So the areas where we've got this amp glow that's that's still sticking around, um, we can sort of darken that down a bit and remove that. So open up the preview again, go to RGB, and then we can pull this down in the middle to darken the overall image, or darken the background of the overall image. Don't want to go too crazy, I mean, it's all down to personal taste. Some some people like sort of super contrasty um, images. I like somewhere in between where the darkness of space isn't completely dark. Um, but yeah, all of this is, is down to personal taste. So I'm just going to hit apply with that. And then one final thing that I um, do here is remove the mask overall. So I'm just impacting the entire image um, as it stands. And maybe look at uh, producing a bit of an S-curve here for the overall image. So if we can turn preview off, that's it before, that's it afterwards. I like the sort of the wispy bits of nebula that you've got around here. You've got the spider nebula here, the fly down the bottom. And then with the tab pole, there's actually some sort of wispy parts of nebula that are quite faint as well. So I like that, I'll just apply that. So that's all, all of Curves Transformation. We've finished with the mask, so we can close that down now as well. And that warning was just saying, you've got a mask applied to this, so yeah, we're just removing that. What I might try is um, Script Utilities and Dark Structure Enhance, just to see whether or not this makes any difference on any of the areas of the nebula. Uh, we've got some bits of the Tadpole Nebula that kind of just boosting the contrast there could look quite nice. Although most of the other parts of the nebula, they're all fairly open, so I'm... Not expecting this to maybe make a big difference, but it might make a difference. It's always good to sort of try these out with your different images because you you never know. Sort of one thing might work really well with one nebula, uh, might be completely terrible with another, um, and you don't know unless you don't try. So that took quite some time to uh, complete. Let's see uh, what the difference is. So this is after. Wow, even undoing is just taking a long time to complete. Um, so the actual running of the script took quite some time to actually run. Uh, I think it was made a slight difference down here, but um, not a massive one. Uh, let's just undo that. Yeah, it's darkened up this area here. Um, but not a massive amount, but however, um, it took quite a while to run, so I'm going to keep that. Um, so we've got the final stage now is just to uh, bring the stars back into the image. Now what I'm going to do is just boost uh, the saturation of the stars a little bit. Um, I tend to like to do this just when you've got um, some nice coloured stars in the image. It's nice to just boost that saturation a, a small amount. I don't go overboard with this, but um, again, all of this is down to personal preference. So just a, a couple of um, curves transformations applied to the stars. Close that, close the preview. Just going to save these quickly so that just in case something goes wrong. Ready to uh, bring the stars back into the image and we're just going to use pixel math for that. Um, what I've been doing uh, in the past is is literally just adding the, the, the two images together like that. Um, and I'm just going to show quickly the difference between that and another method that I've been using fairly recently so I'm just gonna apply that to create a new image so I've, I've selected create new image rather than replace target and it's just gonna add those two images together um, and yeah just looking at different ways of combining images with the stars uh, I've actually discovered that this isn't really the best way of doing it and there's actually some better um, approaches and uh, one thing I'm planning on doing is is looking at a number of different ways of combining uh, the stars within images and actually then uh, seeing which ones work best for different images see if they're all the same or whether there should there's just one approach that should be used for all of them 
um, and then the so that's that's my original approach. Uh, if I just change rename this to original. And then we'll go for the, the new approach, which um, this is actually on um, sort of many forums. Um, and what I'll do in the video is actually go through and explain explain exactly what's happening with um, this pixel math so people understand it. but. For now, let's just create uh, this image. So that's that. Close down Pixel Math. Uh, put this as new. And I think the the key thing to look into is um, yeah where the stars are combined. And the reason why um, it's important to get this right is that you've got um, the stars are not really being manipulated, but the where the stars have been taken from has been manipulated. And when you're adding these back together again, you run the risk of, of changing how the stars um, actually appear and they might be blown out and things like that. And I think with this, you can see that there's a subtle difference, but um, yeah, not massive. The stars are slightly bigger on the original approach and there's a likelihood that actually with the stars themselves that they're uh, actually slightly blown out. Whereas the, the, the new approach I've just shown you here, uh, you can see that the stars are not as large um, and overall they have a better look to them. So I'll definitely be using that approach from, uh, from this point forward. So this is the final image. I hope you found this video useful. Hit that like button if you did. And thank you very much for watching. Clear skies.